Hi, everybody, and welcome. I hope your spring break is wonderful, wonderful. Let's hit a little uh, Hess's Law and Entropy. Um, Hess's Law is simply um, products minus reactants equals the change. Products minus reactants equals the change. Products minus reactants equals the change. So what this means is um, that the delta H for a whole reaction, we're just going to subtract the products minus the reactants. People flip it around far too often. It's always products minus reactants. And this is normal, okay? This is just how much did you grow since last year? Final minus initial. What's your height now? What was your height last year? What's the energy of the products now? What's the energy of the reactants before? And this table has values for pretty much all of them, okay? We talked a little bit last time about how there's also delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Ooh, where'd that guy go? Right. Oh, no. No, we're almost there. Oh, my screen's being moody. Oh, look at that. Um, but we showed how it could be delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Right here, right? And then we've got products minus reactants for the other one. So I'm going to do a couple of these, and I think that's about it. So that should be good. So we've got this big table of everything, and it's in your notes, too. I hope you printed it out. So we're going to do find delta S, find delta H, and find delta G. And then we're going to do delta G two different ways. And that's my dog. So um, for this reaction, we're going to do products minus reactants. So I just want to label on the bottom so I have this right. G, H, and S. So it's G, H, and S. So when I slide around, I don't mess it up. Um, so remember, you have to use the coefficients. There's no coefficient here. So my product is zinc hydroxide. Let's do S first, because that's what it asks for. So S is 81.2. So it's going to be 81.2 plus. So I'm going to do my products. I'm, I'm going to write the reaction first, the equation first. That's my way. Let me see if I can pause it. Let me do one, two, three. So we have delta S the reaction equals delta S the products minus delta S the reactants. My products are zinc hydroxide and two NaNO3. So I'm going to look for two NaNO3. NaNO3 here is 207. And okay, so then from that number, I have to subtract. Notice how I've got to like crazily bracket these things. Distributing the negatives, always an issue. So now I've got to do my reactants, which are zinc nitrate, zinc nitrate, which is 181, plus two times the quantity of NaOH, two because the coefficients. And NaOH, all the way over here, 11.9. And then I'm going to throw that into my calculator. So... 81.2 plus quantity 2 times 207. Those quantities, 495.2. And then 181 plus quantity 2 times 11.9. Close quantity. So I have 495 minus 205. I'm keeping the numbers a little better than that. 495 minus 495.2 minus 204.8. Make it 290.4. Now notice this is joules per mole Kelvin. That's a different unit. Or I'm sorry, joules per Kelvin, not per mole Kelvin. Joules per Kelvin. And the joules is different than the other one, which is kilojoules. All right, same deal. New color. Whee! Okay, so we're going to use the same thing for delta H. Delta H, the reaction, equals delta H products minus delta H reactants. And just like before, make sure I get my products in there first, okay? Okay, so my products were zinc hydroxide, negative 642, and NaNO3, which is negative 446 times two, okay? Now minus, don't forget we gotta distribute this, zinc nitrate, so zinc nitrate is negative 569, Plus, again, I've got to be aware of my coefficients. And NaOH is 
is negative 470. Put that into my calculator. Let's see what we get. So when I do that, I get, um, what do I get here? I get negative 641. That's not right. Well, let me, hit this, let me check that. So I did my math a little bad. So what I got was I got negative 1534 minus negative 1509. And when I do that, um, negative 1534 minus negative 1509, I have negative 25. And that's kilojoules per mole. Okay. So now we got to find delta G, which is going to be pretty much the same thing. All right. I'm not going to write this part again. I'm just going to do the products. Minus so, uh oh. Amazon delivered. Okay, so what we did again was we took our products, right? So we've got our, was it zinc hydroxide, sodium nitrate, we've got a coefficient of two, and then I had zinc nitrate and whatever that hydroxide was, coefficient of two there, um, and we just did products minus reactants, okay? And then we're going to throw those um, together, do a little math. So then this part right here will equal negative 1248. And this part right here is negative 1208. So negative 1248 minus the negative is plus a positive, And we get uh, negative 40 kilojoules. Okay. So that's it. That's the other way to do it. The other way, which will give you the exact same answer, is delta H equals, geez, I wrote the wrong one, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Didn't focus on T so much. These answers should be, if we do it the other way, should be close. But remember, the temperature will change it a little bit. Units are very important because that temperature, right, is going to be multiplied by, notice how S has the little weeny joule unit, not kilojoules. So that has an impact. All right. Free energy and equilibrium. Free energy, remember, is delta G. Okay. If delta G is negative, products are favored. So equilibrium has a K greater than 1. Algebraically, and again, I just snipped this from your equation sheet, delta K equals E, that's a little e, right, to the negative delta G over RT. But again, the units are evil. So R is 8.314. Uh-oh. R is 8.314. And normally use the point 0.08211, but we're going to use, um, oh, where did it go? Oh, I'm really on the wrong page. So um, we're going to use the R1, which has joules in its unit, right? And delta G has to be in joules, not kilojoules. Temperature has to be in Kelvin. And E is the natural log associated dude, not 6.02 E23. So also algebraically, delta G equals negative RT ln K. Same unit rules, okay? So notice again. Delta G has to be in joules. This is this is a huge one, okay? G has to be in joules, and you have to use the correct R, okay? All right. So math fun. When delta G equals zero, it's at equilibrium. K is very close to one. So one side isn't favored. That means that reactants and products are about the same. A large negative delta G means the reaction will go from the right. Lots of products. K is P over R, so K is large. A large positive delta G means reaction will not go far right, meaning it's non-spontaneous. Okay? So this says stay mostly products. Please forgive this. I'm sure you all see that that says stay mostly reactants. You'll get lots of reactants. Okay? So K equals P over R, so K is small. Their words... When delta G is much larger or much smaller than RT, the value of K deviates strongly from one. Much larger or much smaller is like 10 to the third. Okay. Wow. All right. So coupled reactions. Delta G can be changed by changing T or adding electricity or light. That means you are adding energy. Okay. 
Some reactions are coupled where an unfavorable reaction can take place by a favorable reaction, giving it an energy source. This works in your everyday life. Um, do you want to go with me to go shopping? Your mother. No, I don't want to. I'll take you out to eat. Oh, okay. So taking you out to eat is favorable. Going shopping with your mother is never favorable. So that's it. Okay. More chemistry like ones. Unfavorable. Phone battery charged on its own. Not going to happen. Favorable. Electricity flows from the outlet. Stick your finger in the outlet and find out. Don't do that. That's a joke. Combine the two and you can charge your phone. The combination has a negative G. So this one is small positive delta G, or just a positive delta G, doesn't have to be small. And then this one is favorable, which is a large negative delta G. So positive delta G with a large negative delta G means you're going to end up with a negative one. Okay. Unfavorable, snow melts in winter. Favorable, sunlight flows into snowman. Combine the two, and you kill Olaf. Aww. Delta H is zero for elements in standard state. Delta G is zero for elements in standard state. S is zero only for a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin, which means never, never S equals zero. Never happens. But what else happens is we're done. Doodles.